All right, we're gonna keep things moving here. Big thanks to our last panel. Our next speaker takes us into the importance of building community. Let's welcome the program director of the Knight Foundation, Raul Moes. Welcome. That was a phenomenal welcome. Thank you, George, for clapping. Folks, it's really great to be with you all. Hey there. It's good to be with you all. Thank you to Emerge for inviting us back. Uh, Knight Foundation is a founding partner of Emerge Americas, year six now. We've been part of this community since the very beginning, and it's amazing to see everything that's come together. I'm here just because I've got a couple of insights that I want to throw out there. I've got a couple of provocations that I want to kind of plant out with everybody here. All of us here are thinking in terms of what it takes to build startup communities, startup ecosystems. And so the Knight Foundation has been working at this front since 2012, 2013, in partnership with Emerge and many others in this community. And what we saw at that point was a couple of things. Saw two trends that collided. One trend was that globally, the cost to innovate had come down. Anybody with a 4G connection could build amazing software, could unlock enterprise value, and could play and build globally relevant product from anywhere. The Sahara, Antarctica, you name it. If you had an internet connection, you could build it. The other thing we noticed was that Miami was entering its adolescence, a renaissance of sorts. It was becoming deeper and more culturally relevant. People wanted to be here year round, not just for Art Basel in the winter, right? Summer still hot, summer still kicks people out, but there's a permanent kind of creative class that was taking root here, and that got us really excited. Those two trends basically said that there was something happening. And that same trend that was happening here was happening across the country. It's what Steve Case, the founder of AOL, calls the rise of the rest. He and his red, big red bus are actually gonna be here in Miami on Thursday, mapping out Miami. And they've already been in over 33 cities where this exact kind of activity is happening. Where markets that were once inaccessible, where talent could not choose to be and build, are now alive with companies of relevance, companies that have global consequence. Miami is gonna be part of that thesis in a matter of two days. This is our home, my hometown, your town. So much has changed in that skyline in the last handful of years. It's a different city in many ways. But it's not just the built environment that has changed. The people here are different. This, right now, this activity, Emerge, was not here just six years ago. These conversations were happening very much in silos and very much in the kind of close quarters of Miami. What's happened is that not only has a city changed dramatically, physically, but the people that have chosen to be here and build here have also changed. We have some examples of what that looks like. It's not just a once a year thing at Emerge. There are people that are building companies here. And folks ask, well, Raul, that's cute. You work for a foundation. You don't have to sell widgets. What does it actually mean? Who's actually hiring in Miami? Who's actually building this? And it's really awesome that we get to point to folks like Chewy, which sold for $3.3 billion a few years ago. We can point to things like Magic Leap, which are here with us, our friends are here. And those are nice wins as well. But there's also other wins that maybe aren't as publicized. eBuilder, a construction real estate tech company, sold for a half billion dollars last year. Not many folks realized that eBuilder was here. Fairlogix, a travel tech company, sold for $360 million last year. Also didn't really have a huge kind of, of of, of noise around it. I mention that because I think it's really important and it goes to the whole point of this, of, of the insights that I want to throw your way. And that is Miami has a ton of uncovered gems, of, of, of rather covered gems, of hidden gems that we have yet to uncover. And a lot of these companies are part of that thesis. So what are we doing here? What makes this work? Why are these companies here? And how can we ensure that what they do is permanent, sustainable, is here for the long term, and most importantly, benefits Greater Miami in all its touch points. Some folks would tell you that Miami doesn't have enough venture capital. We don't have enough venture capitalists or enough funds in Miami, aren't enough angel investors, and that you really need a ton of venture capital to make a startup ecosystem thrive. I think there's some truth to that. There's a lot of other folks that would say, Miami is great to vacation in, but you're never gonna be able to recruit the kind of talent that you need to build meaningful companies. You don't have a strong talent pipeline. You don't have a university system that pumps out MIT quality folks. It's never gonna happen because you don't have talent. 
I disagree there. I think we have really strong universities and great talent. But I hear you, talent is really important. So I've listed two things, talent and venture capital that seem to be kind of critical to what's happening in any startup ecosystem. And people are always questioning, is that important? Is that happening in Miami? And they're measuring us by those standards. I want to throw out a different standard, community. Again, you might be saying, there goes the foundation guy talking about community. Ignoring the dollars, ignoring the real thing that happens on the ground, he's out of touch. Not so fast. So immediately prior to joining the Nat Foundation, I was the managing director of a group called Miami Angels. We were seed stage investors into Florida-based tech and tech-enabled companies. I know a thing or two about what this market looks like, what founders in this market are looking for, and what the capital landscape in the city looks like. Yeah, capital is important. So is talent. Community is perhaps the most important piece. And I want to get a little wonky with you. If you allow me to get wonky, it's the CPA in me that's, that's coming out. I am a numbers guy through and through. I believe and wholeheartedly that we need a robust venture capital pipeline and we need a robust talent pipeline to keep nurturing what's happening here. But to my great surprise, and it's still surprising me in many ways, it's not the determining factor. And now we have more numbers to prove that's the case. So our friends over at Startup Genome recently got together and said, listen, there's all these cities out there that are looking to build startup communities, startup ecosystems. Let's map it out. Let's see what's working. What's working in the communities that are thriving, that are most productive in terms of wealth created, jobs created? Let's see if there's any similarities. And what they found was that community, specifically how connected founders, investors, and high velocity talent are, how connected they are to each other, was the biggest correlating factor to how successful a community was. It wasn't venture capital. It wasn't whether you had a superstar university right next door. Those things matter, but they don't matter as much. And they actually matter by several magnitudes less than how it is that your region's startup founders and investors and talent base know each other and support each other. That was a surprise to them as it is a surprise to me. But it's also really encouraging, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So what you have on the screen is local connectedness and ecosystem performance. That's a really strong correlation that we're seeing there. It's about a 0.5 correlation. The ecosystems that pumped out the most number of companies, that produced the most wealth, that created the most jobs, those founders and founding teams and investors rated their communities as being densely connected. They knew who was there. They knew who was there to help them. Founders were helping founders solve through peer learning and peer mentorship. Investors were helping companies even if they weren't invested in that company. And the talent base of those cities knew that there was a critical mass of opportunity in their place. They felt really connected and jointly vested in the success of their city. I'll throw out another kind of uh, chart your way. It mimics almost identically the one from before. So how do you rank performance in an ecosystem? Why are we doing all this? Is it simply because we want to have amazing AR kind of goggles? Are we doing it for some, some, some different reason? I'll tell you why Knight's doing it. Knight is investing in Miami's startup community because for a very long time, our city has not been able to retain the kind of individuals that build jobs and companies that diversify and build resiliency into our economic structure. I'll say it in a different way. Miami's amazing at retaining lawyers and bankers. We're really good at keeping real estate developers employed. I think all of that is really good and healthy and positive. We historically have not been that good at keeping around the entrepreneurs that are building companies, that are producing the jobs, that are high wages, high growth, and that have resiliency in terms of the systemic changes we're seeing in our economy. That's changing, and that's why Knight is investing in this space. We want to see our economy be more diverse. We want to see it be more resilient. And we want to see Miami's talent base grow here, choose to stay here, and find success and inclusion here. And so what does all this mean for our work? We've put about $32 million to work in Miami's startup scene since 2012. Emerge is one of our flagship investments. And we're thrilled to see just how much success across the community it's had. It proves to us that everything that's happening here is of, by, and for Miami. 
It's not that the Knight Foundation one day woke up and said, huh, I think it's going to be innovation. I think it's going to be tech entrepreneurship. We should probably do this and push it top down. Rather, this came from the bottom up. It came from community. It lives in community. And that's why our next chapter is oriented towards community. We're focused on growing Miami's startup ecosystem. Tactically, what does that mean? It means that we're investing in people. It means that when somebody moves to Miami and they feel that they haven't found their tribe, we want to solve for that. It means that when an investor comes to town and they want to know where the other investors, where the peers are, where the great companies can be found, it means that we have a lively and robust kind of discourse happening around the investor class, where it's not just real estate investors, but investors of all sorts, especially in the venture asset class, and that there's on-ramps where they know how to discover that deal flow. It means that when somebody graduates from FIU with a degree in computer engineering, if they get an offer from somebody in the Valley or Seattle, more power to them, I think it's amazing, maybe you should go for a little bit. But if they choose to leave, I want them to know that there's a critical mass of relevant and interesting opportunities for them here in Miami. So when they choose to come back, they know where to go. We're investing in building deeper, tighter networks of high velocity players. We want to see this community be not only thriving and alive and very kind of successful, but we want to see it be more grounded to one another and to place. So keep an eye out. This Wednesday, we'll be making a nice announcement, positive announcement of our next wave of investments in community our next wave of investments in Miami. It really is of, by, and for this place. The way we're funding, what we're seeing, most importantly, who we're seeing here, gives us incredible confidence that what's happening in Miami is real. It's authentically taking place at the grassroots. It's taking root and living beyond our investments, as it should. And it's spawning off more and more and more good activity and more good things for the region. So. With that, I'll leave you guys with a couple of final thoughts in terms of what it is that you all can do and how you all can invest your time in building with us. This for us is very much, and for me, it's very much my day job. It's also a passion. But it can't be done alone. It can't be done just because Knight thinks it should be so or because we want it to be so. Everybody here, literally everybody in this convention center, has a role to play in this. What's interesting to me and what our friends at Endeavor complimented was this question of influence and power. And this is where you guys come in. The ecosystems, the communities that have the most productive startups, that produce the most wealth, that produce the most kinds of jobs, the jobs that we want to see here, are the ones where we elevate founders into positions of influence. Where the people who are doing this mythical thing that we call economic development, it's not that mythical, Entrepreneurs do it, they hire people all the time, they deploy capital all the time. It's those communities where those founders are in charge and setting the agenda that produce the most success, the most wealth, and the most community. So what do we need? We need a Miami where we support and elevate founders. The folks that are taking the most risk, early founding teams, that we support them in their journey. That we bring them to the table and listen to them first and put a lot of weight behind them. That's what these folks uh, are, are looking for. It's what we've heard folks kind of ask for as well. And it's what folks at Endeavor and Startup Genome have validated as being the most critical to the success of a community. When we put founders in the driver's seat. Looking at it a different way, on the, right -hand si on the left hand side you have a column in yellow. The other side you have a column in blue. The column in yellow are the firms that are performing above the 90th percentile in terms of job creation, wealth, and revenue. The key differentiator between all of these is how founders supported one another, connected to one another, and were elevated in community. Yeah, there's a lot of art behind how we build startup communities. It really is custom to place. But the one thing that's universal is the density of connections between founders and founding teams and how a city chooses to elevate those people in terms of setting the agenda. And Endeavor helps us kind of prove that out. Parting words, parting guidance, and an ask of you all. You can ask all you want of me. I'd love to connect with you. I have an ask of you. We got to grow a community. We got to do this at the grassroots. We got to find amazing people, connect them to place, connect them to each other, help them find their tribe. We got to prioritize quality, over quantity. 
There's a ton of stuff happening in Miami. I love my hometown. It also frustrates me a lot of times, let's be honest. Let's emphasize the best of Miami, which is oftentimes found on the margins, on the periphery. Let's bring the best of Miami to the table. Let's put them in the driver's seat. We have a thesis that like attracts like. Great people want to hang out and play ball and work and build with great people. Let's connect those folks together and build peer mentorship and peer relationships there. And the last thing which I mentioned before is that it's founder-led. The folks that are on the front lines, the ones that have the most understanding of what's happening in a place when it comes to economic development, when it comes to raising capital, when it comes to, to building wealth and jobs, are folks that are putting it out all online, founders. Find a founder that's in your community, in your tribe, in your sphere of influence. Connect with them. Hear him or her out. Find out what it is that they struggle with, that they yearn for. What is it that they are looking for to be successful in this place? I'd be willing to bet that in most cases, they've never been asked that before. And in a lot of instances, their response might surprise you. It might not be venture capital that they need. It might actually not even be access to talent. They might tell you that they need more connections to each other, that they need to know who else is in this town and can support them in their journey. That's my ask of you all. I'll be around. Knight Foundation is proud to sponsor the Starve.Miami booth. You can find me uh, and a bunch of folks from the Knight Foundation team there later today if we can ever be of help to you in any way, shape, or form. Thank you for everything you guys do for the city. Really appreciate it. It's an honor to be partners in this with all of you. And enjoy the rest of the day. I mean, it's amazing what's happening here. Thank you.